Good morning, folks. We've got some outstanding articles to cover, a couple of them relating to our second video released yesterday. Let's run it all down, starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we come to 193 angstroms to view the rotation of the coronal holes through the Earth-facing heliographic longitudes. Incoming northern group will magnetically connect to Earth this weekend, but the solar wind from the leading southern opening should arrive around the same time. Any considerable coronal hole stream impact is going to be easily visible on the solar wind, magnetometers, and KP index given that they are all quiet right now. So folks, it's been ongoing a few hours already, the tropical storm assault on the Gulf Coast. It developed into a lightning fury overnight, but may have lost a bit of steam at the end before landfall. Hard to tell on satellites, and the run-up today must be monitored, and also for re-intensification bomb-outs as it heads up the coast tomorrow. Taking a quick peek in on Ghana, 28 are dead, thousands displaced, hundreds of homes destroyed in their latest floods this week. Not sure it's over there yet either. If you missed our second video yesterday, we highly recommend it. It covers the top five instances of key institutes breaking stride against the mainstream climate story. It's the sort of thing I couldn't have dreamed of reporting just in 2015. But alas, as we focused yesterday on Yale's ocean-based rebellion, today we find them diving deeper into the atmosphere. That uncertainty that we heard about from NASA in yesterday's second video is addressed here, treating the aerosol cooling effects. The simple fact is that the story about volcanoes, the production and ionization of cosmic rays, and the unseen ways in which human emissions actually cool the planet far more important than the models have realized. Let's go next to the planned orbital insertion of the ESA's Solar Orbiter. It's going to follow the Parker probe and keep a much wider eccentric orbit. This will indeed allow it to get a wee bit closer, even if those interactions will be fewer and with time between. Get out to 2030, it's still happily eccentric. Quick note. We've discussed plasma speed and magnetic fields of space weather recently, but for the kill shot devastation of a solar blast, it will be about the density. Interesting read, and a rational one too. I've seen super fast streams with low density, unable to match the geo-effectiveness of modest speed streams with tremendous density. Now let's go out to the cosmos with a bang. Galactic scale magnetic field reversal of the large coherent structure visible in NGC 4631. Polarization of light along the bar disk as visible from the Milky Way shows reversing components on the north, with a nearly coherent southern sector except for the inflow to the nucleus, which sparks about as much imagination as we see on the north. Interesting bit up next, blaming cosmic jets and their interaction with the intracluster medium for keeping that gas from the jets hot and unable to form stars. It has long been wondered why that jet material doesn't cool and make stars outside of the galaxies. Turns out there's just too much stuff out there already for it to interact with, and it's not dark matter. FYI, here are some diffuse plasma terms in this field you should know from smallest to largest. Interstellar medium between the stars of a galaxy, circumgalactic medium where the halo of the galaxy is found, and then, in very large galaxy clusters, the diffuse intracluster medium pervades the space between the galaxies. This paper was about the big one. Very cool paper up next, claiming that the more connected a galaxy is to the cosmic web, the larger it is, and this should not at all be surprising. Remember, NASA, Keck, Caltech, and National Labs recently showed us how those connections to the web are feeding material down onto the galaxies in spiraling helical vortex filament currents. No wonder they're larger. Up next, a little update on tokamak plasma from the Princeton Plasma Physics Lab relating to the efforts to build the first ever operational tokamak fusion set to go into Europe and see first plasma in 2025. We will be discussing this on our podcast today and how it could be a catastrophe for an entire continent. Better not be tired just yet because we're going deep, back in time to a primordial scenario of the universe. Now while they know and see the effects of cosmic scale magnetic fields, they have never before seen how they could have been made, and everything about their inflationary period in the history of the cosmos should have killed the fields. But alas, we now have a way to make it work, and it's the sort of thing we've all been waiting to hear. All you need to do is add a strong primordial electric field as well, and it all works out. Well, that's as simple as a plasma or electric proponent in cosmology could ever want it to be. Very well done to celebrate the 200th anniversary of humans and electromagnetism. But where would the resulting currents be now? Partially extinct, partially sculpted, 
and hidden. In this image, the color is density, revealing a filament and clumps above it in hotter colors. The contours are magnetic fields based on polarization, and we're indeed going to focus on the bottom portion with that filament. I'm going to add some delta symbols in there at what is the opening of a tunnel containing the filament, a tube that should be more easily visible as I take those deltas away. The field not only drapes over the filament but wraps around it as well. They do indeed say that we are seeing those fields wrapping around a column feature there, and this is where our previous learning must be applied because we don't see the electric current within that filament but we know it must be there based on that field structure spiraling around it. Remember, they flew through the electric currents in the South Pole Jet of Enceladus, and even inside the current, Cassini missed 95% of it because it was blocked by dust and gases. Just take the same concept and apply it here. The same reason they don't see the current in the larger scale cosmic web for the dust and gases. If it's not yet clear why the Plasma Cosmology movie and lessons therein are key to comprehending the cosmic observations, I don't know what it will take. We greatly appreciate your support. Our weekly Fly on the Wall podcast is coming up here in a few hours at suspiciousobservers.org. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.